Hello, and welcome back to the Matt Yossa channel. For those that are new, this is kind of an instructional guide to lamp working, little tips and tricks, along with some crazy projects from here and there. So I'm starting off with cleaning the glass with some isopropyl alcohol. Having a little bit of dust or oil on the surface can cause some imperfections during the melting process. So to make sure you get the best finish possible, it's good to start with clean glass. And now that the rod is nicely attached to the punty, I'm gonna go ahead and evenly rotate it and brush it back and forth through the flame. Give it a nice even core heat. I'll go ahead and start pulling apart very slowly, very evenly, and form up a glass stringer. Now I like to compare glass stringers to pencils. You know, if you're going to draw a picture on a piece of paper, you'd use a pencil. Here when I want to draw on the clear glass or apply color to it, I'll use a stringer. And now when you're melting it off here, you want to pull it apart very slowly. That way you don't create a long glass string. It's also good to go in and melt the ends just for a moment. That way they're not too sharp and poke you later. And stringers really have all types of applications. It's one of the most basic steps in the processes of lamp working, but also one that could be one of the hardest, especially trying to get very even diameter stringers that you like. For this one, I'm gonna pull it a little bit slower. I'm gonna give the heat a little bit more time to radiate out. And that should give me a little thicker of a stringer, probably twice the diameter at least of the last one. I'll come back here to try to even out this bump. It's very similar to what they'll call the knuckle when you do very large poles. For production, it might be a better use of your time just to cut the knuckle off. But for practice, I think it's a good idea to come back and even it out. You'll get good practice with applying very gentle heat. That way you don't overheat it or over pull it. Being so thin, it's gonna wanna react very quickly in the flame. There's also no need to pop them in the kiln. You can just place them down on a fireproof surface. If they're pulled thin enough, they might even be cool to the touch before you even put them down. That's just how much more reactive it is to the environment when it's in that thin diameter state versus like a two to three inch marble, which would definitely take minutes before I would even want to set it down somewhere. And now I'm pulling out a tag glass color called Fade to Black, and I didn't get quite as pulled as I wanted. So I'm gonna start to focus my heat on the rod itself and continue to pull from that. So this is another way to pull out your glass. You do it in a continual fashion of just working your way down the rod. Of course, this way is much more difficult to do. It's hard to get the nice diameter poles that you want. And it's normally a technique I save for pulling out clear stringers on a larger clear rod, something like 12 to 14 millimeters, a little bit larger than this. I wouldn't think a clear stringer would have much of an application on clear glass, but when used with reactive colored glass like this, you can protect the glass in very specific areas and create some special effects doing it. You can see here when I'm heating up bands in the glass, it's causing the silver and other metals in the surface layer to react and change an amber or purple color. And now this amber, purple, and colors like it that change in the flame as you work them are classified as reactive colors versus colors that do not react in the flame and stay true to their original color all throughout are traditionally classified as WYSIWYGs or what you see is what you get. So things like blue cobalt and cadmium yellow and orange will stay true to the original color, while the reactive ones like this transparent yellow ended up a opaque purple. And so as you're working with your rods of glass, they begin to get shorter and shorter like this little nub right here. 
So once it becomes too short to hold on to, there are a couple ways to get it pulled out or to use it. Here I've attached a handle or a punty onto both ends and I'm making sure it's straight all throughout. And now I'm gonna heat the entire thing up evenly and pull it. They also have what's called rod holders, which are just a simple metal tool with a lock screw to hold your rod in there. But they tend to suck the heat out of the glass where it's attached, so it'd be impossible to pull out the entire thing with the rod holder. And you can see quite the long pull I got out of the little flame. To get more use out of the flame, you can hold the rod less perpendicular and more at an angle. So you're using more of the length instead of just the width. So here I'm marveling down the little ends left over from the pulling process. I've been using the same punty to kind of collect them up together. I used to do this for fun as a little practice technique when I was working on pulling out stringers, making marbles and things. These days, if I'm careful, I can usually pull out most of the color, not leaving much behind, but I'm gonna leave a little extra behind for this one just to have a nice little color preview of what I did. Kind of reminded me of one of the most often asked questions when it comes to uh, requests of a glass project is what kind of colors can you do? So I think something like this, maybe on a little bit larger scale, would be a good preview of what colors you have available. And also just something to preview at the end of the video. I normally like to do a little project or get something made for the end of the episode. And I know the video is a little bit longer than it probably needs to be. I know pulling stringers isn't a very complicated process, but a fundamental one for a lot of the projects you'll do ahead. I normally don't pull my stringers ahead of time like this, uh, especially the reactive ones. Normally I'll wait for the beginning of a project, what I'm making, to decide what colors and what diameter I want to pull them to. But for this video, I just wanted to do a bit in bulk just to give you some good previews of stringer pulls. Later in the video, I actually start to pull them more vertically. I tend to prefer it a little bit more than this horizontal method. I think this was definitely the easiest way to start though. And on top of that, it is good for the learning process to practice something day to day over a longer course of time, let's say months to even years, rather than trying to pack all that practice into a very short session. So you'd be pulling your stringers before every marble or pendant each day. Unless of course you're out of practice and more in production, then it might save you time to pull a lot of stringers ahead since you've already got the whole project kind of planned and ready to go. I know when people request a glass project, that initial R&D, the research and development phase, is what takes up a lot of time. Once you have everything figured out and a demo piece made that you can agree on, then you can really start the gears rolling and kind of put it into production. And real quick here, I'm gonna be pulling out some cadmium red. It's going to temporarily change to a dark brown, even black looking color, but will change back to red once it sets up and cools. So technically it's still a WYSIWYG, it's just the cadmium inside of the glass glowing at a much lower temperature, doing weird stuff. Cadmium colors can be a good one to practice on, a good one to allow you to gauge the temperature as you're working. You just need to put a little bit of cadmium into your piece and when you start to see it come back from that red and black to the normal red it's supposed to be, you'll know it's time to reheat your piece. It's getting a bit too cool, probably under the 600 degree Fahrenheit range. And so here, after I put a nice even heat into it, I'm going to go into one of those vertical poles I was talking about. Just seems a little bit easier to pull it with gravity, and along with that, the radiant heat will rise up along the rod itself. 
allowing it to stay warmer longer. Which kind of follows along that tip I always mention about holding it just for a moment before you blow into it or move it around to allow that radiant heat kind of balance through. And also to note watching the video, it might seem like I'm not doing that, like I'm not holding it still for a moment, but the video is sped up a little bit, so it is being held there a little bit longer than it seems. So unfortunately, I haven't been getting a lot of work done this week. It's been a little bit hot in the studio. Also, the family's been dropping by a lot during the work hours lately since school's out. Of course, I can't complain about that. It's always great to have company. The lack of climate control in the studio is something to complain about though. It's always good to watch out for heat exhaustion and to stay well hydrated. I know I tend to get pretty dehydrated behind the torch. Not only is it a pretty extreme environment with the heat, but I think artists tend to get enveloped in their work when they're doing their thing. So you quickly lose track of the time and even the last time you've eaten. It's a good thing to be mindful of your needs as you're working so you don't uh, overdo it. And I think this will be the last pull there. We've got a few pretty long ones there in the end. I'm gonna go ahead and punty up to that multicolored rod of all the little bits there. And then I'm gonna go through section by section and try to melt down those ridges and get the entire thing as smooth and straight as I can. And I won't use my graphite marver here either. I wanna to try to do this as much as I can by hand. I'll give it a lot of heat to gather it up into a molten state and then give it a little pull to return it to the cylindrical shape. I do have a few extra bits on here. I have some white out from tag glass, Troutman art glass, and also some slime. It's a very vibrant green color, uh, kind of reminiscent of the slime you see in Ghostbusters. It starts off pretty opaque, not quite like a solid color. If you work it slow in a low heat, you can kind of keep that opacity to it. But the way I think you're supposed to work it is to heat it up enough to start to fume and burn off that outside layer to reveal the transparent green undercoat. So it's really great in shaping work, along with the other silver striking colors, the amber, purples, and reactive ones. The fact that you get multiple colors or slightly different shades of the same color kind of gives it a little bit more texture in the finished work. One example might be a solid white or maybe even a solid blue elephant. You know, if the tusks and the face and the trunk is all the same color, when you're looking straight at it, it kind of all blends together. So it almost looks like a big blob, especially if you don't have the right shadows coming in and creating the contours to tell you what the shapes are. So doing the elephant in an amber purple, for example, would strike up different textures all throughout, giving you a little bit more detail to follow along the contours of its face. Along with the areas that are getting hit a little bit more with the flame might be striking up a little bit more intensely. You know, the tusk or the trunk might end up a dark purple, while the body or the core of the elephant will remain a nice amber color. And it's really hard to know which reactive colors are going to work the best for you until you work them and put them in your own kind of projects. But some good solid starters would be the double Mai Tai from Troutman Glass. I've been doing that one a lot in this episode. Some blue exotic or green exotic from North Star. And last for Glass Alchemy, the Passion line, especially the Triple Passion. I think that might be one of the more popular ones. It has a nice range of colors you can get. I was having a little bit of trouble getting the colors I wanted with that one, but I think I just wasn't striking it right. It's probably just a little bit harder of a color to work, but I really did love using the purple luster. It gave me some nice deep and rich purples. So that's looking pretty good right there. I'm going to throw it in the kiln. 
I'll have to wait a moment for the molten glass to cool down there at the tip. Under the desk you can see it's still glowing. And here it is, this little color sample rod. I think it's kind of neat. It's like a mosaic kind of look. The stringers aren't too bad either, but I like the colors that came out of it. I'll store them away for a future project, but like I said before, I recommend to pull your stringers before you attempt your project. And then once you have a good design in mind, then pull them all in bulk to save yourself some time. Thank you for watching this episode on stringers. This is the Matt Yasa channel, and remember to stay melty.